So a question I get asked a ton is how do I have this set up right here? How am I able to create content as far as creating audio tutorials and things of that nature with one, hearing my vocal, two, recording and capturing the actual DAW screen, but also capturing the actual audio of the DAW screen as well. Second part of it is workflow. How am I able to edit these videos? What have I learned along the path to kind of create a workflow that makes me way more efficient, way faster, and also control that quality that I'm looking for out of the entire thing. I'm gonna show you my entire setup of how I'm recording these tutorials and things of that nature, and maybe how you can use it for yourself in your workflow. So let's get to it. First thing we're gonna talk about is the cameras. What am I visually recording this on right now? Let's take a look. Now the camera I'm using is this one right here. And this is a Sony a7 IV. So basically I'm using the Sony a7 IV to be the capture as far as my actual visuals and stuff like that. So this is the camera that I'm using for that. The next part of it is, and you may be saying to yourself, and probably the most important part is, what am I recording this to? Where is this camera going? Where is everything going? Basically, or essentially, I have a brain in my computer or my system. There is this one piece that is the mainframe, the thing that is taking in the audio, that's listening to the video, that's everything in my studio. And it is this piece right here that has changed everything. And I got this a long time ago. And that is my Atom Mini Switcher, which is this right here. And basically, this is the device that I'm using to capture the audio, the video, everything into one brain everything that i'm also recording is going on to this particular hard drive so all the audio all the video all those things are separately being recorded onto this one thing now to help you wrap your head around it basically what i'm doing is look at it like different streams or multiple streams for the most part you have two visual representations one being my visual camera two being the actual daw screen with that being said, that's going into the ATEM right here, one and two in the back, HDMI. So basically HDMI outputs are feeding out of my laptop and out of that particular camera over here, as you can see, and coming right into this one right here. So literally one and two on these inputs of these HDMIs is my DAW, which is the output of my computer screen, and then also my camera output. My DAW screen, as far as what you're seeing on the screen right now, which is right here, that is being fed obviously out of my laptop, which is down here somewhere, but at the same time as it's feeding outside to this TV screen, there's also another HDMI in my computer that's feeding directly into this ATEM. The ATEM is literally the big secret. It's the thing that is the central hub for all of the actual streams of audio and video feeding everything. So that actual computer screen or my computer as far as the actual um, screen is coming out and into my ATEM, that's one. Then for my actual camera that's coming out HDMI, as you can see right here, out HDMI, and it's feeding into the ATEM as well. So now it's also recording the ISO files of those. So I'm getting an independent stream of the actual camera, and then I'm getting an independent stream of the actual DAW screen or the computer in general. So I got two videos that are separate that are being recorded. Got it? Cool. Audio. Now, the thing about the audio is this. I'm doing something a little bit that I say to myself, I'm kind of embarrassed to say, but here's how I'm doing the audio. Obviously, when I'm recording my actual vocal sound, as far as me talking to you, I want that stream to be separate. I want to be able to clean that vocal up and not have it botched in with the actual DAW audio that I'm actually playing back in the actual session. So here's what I do. What I'm doing is I'm recording on this particular microphone. This microphone is feeding an entirely separate audio interface. In the back of the audio interface, there are some outputs. And on the outputs, all it's doing is feeding out of the interface and into the ATEM on channel two. And that is it. So it's coming out of the audio interface and feeding right into channel two on this particular ATEM. Now, 
I'm able to have a separate stream of just my vocal through this particular audio interface. I got a really cheap audio interface that allowed me to also have a mute button, which I'll show you, which is mad important to be able to do this. At any moment, I could just mute my actual vocal whenever I'm playing music and stuff like that. So I don't have to do the tutorials with headphones on. That was important to me. And that's a big, big game changer for me. So simple. So microphone is being recorded with a whole separate interface that's working standalone coming outside of that interface right into the Atom. Once again, the Atom has two audio inputs. Here's the next part. The next part is getting the door audio right. Now, for me, I didn't want a workflow of needing to use something like some virtual drivers or anything. I wanted to be able to leave my actual session just how it was. So I said to myself, how can I create a workflow or get the sound out of my DAW and into the Atom in a way that doesn't allow me or doesn't make me or force me to download, a, you know, or create this aggregate device or create a virtual anything i just was like give me the sound of what is coming out the door and i'll and i'll be happy here's where i landed i'm kind of embarrassed about it but it works dude so basically long story short so embarrassing what i did was i'm just coming out the headphone jack of the interface here we go do not laugh headphone jack of the interface into this behringer headphone amp right on this particular channel which is channel eight and then out of there out of the headphone jack into the actual atom on channel one now i know what you might be saying i know you're like bro that is not the way uh you should be doing it but i'll be honest with you i made sure and i listened to it as far as the sound uh, coming through every tutorial everything you've heard has been through this particular process and it was an easy process for me to use where sure i may be compromising a bit of the sonics of course because it's going through all of that stuff but at the same time it's a workflow thing and i found that balance when i listened to it in playback though i would actually enjoy the sound i actually didn't feel like it was so detrimental to the point where i was like this is not usable audio the audio was still really good and i still enjoyed what i got from it the low end everything still cuts through i've been using this for years so think about that when it comes to it so basically going out the headphone jack of the actual audio interface. What this allowed me to do was anything I decide to play uh, back on my computer will now feed into the Atom. It's not even worrying about just the DAW audio, but it's just my computer in general as far as anything that decides to feed my Symphony I.O. So that means if I pull up a YouTube video or anything like that, guess what is going to be in it? All that audio is going to feed it. So that's why it was a no-brainer for me for to do it that way. Uh, in that regard. Now, the cool thing that I also want to mention about the Atom is, is that the Atom allows me to see all the streams as far as audio, as far as video, right in the moment. So if I show you my screen on the right hand side in my studio, you can see this screen right here, which I'm looking at y'all, y'all looking at me. And this is basically where I'm able to see the visuals of what is being recorded. It also allows me to see the audio as far as how it's coming in, if it's too hot. So sometime on stream when y'all are saying, hey, we need to turn the audio up, I can tell just by looking at this, like, oh, I need to turn this up. Right now, mic two is being picked up by this microphone right here. Obviously, the closer I get to it, the louder it gets. But that's basically what's outputting to it. And I think that is basically it, which is not basically. The last thing I'll show you is this. It's being recorded to this particular hard drive, which is this hard drive right here. And this hard drive is, like I told you, is inputting and taking the two video streams, meaning my actual camera screen and the DAW screen. And then it's also taking two audio streams, which is the DAW audio and my actual vocal audio. This gives me full control of everything. The crazy thing about it is what I use to speed up my workflow completely is sometimes have you ever seen me like reach over and click something? Basically, what I'm doing is this. Anytime I hit one or two, I'm switching between my face versus the actual DAW screen. What this does is, and writes this data to the actual program video. So in this, there's actually a video file that I'll get that'll actually record my performance of how I decide to switch between one and two on my, what you call it? So as you can see, one, two, I'm switching between one and two, and that's changing here. 
Now, why is that powerful? And why is that such a game changer? Well, here's the thing. Think about it. If in the middle of the tutorial, I know, okay, now show my DAW screen. When I actually go into the actual hard drive and I look at my files, I have all the files separate, but then there's this one particular file I have that is basically my performance of how I was switching. So now I don't even have to edit the actual put the DAW screen there and then my video there. It's all edited and ready to go for me. And so all I have to do is sometimes put the lower thirds as far as um, ins and outs and stuff like that on the entire thing. And it makes my workflow so much faster. It cut my workflow as far as editing time down tremendously. Now, granted, these days, as of the past, I'd say about a year and a half, I've been offloading that duty to editors that I found that are super talented and they've been editing my videos. But for the first six, five years of the entire thing, I was basically using this workflow of the switching back and forth to just cut down the editing time that I would need to turn around an actual tutorial and piece of content. Now to each his own, this is just my workflow that works for me that I feel comfortable in, but for the most part, I think that's it. Okay, so to me, this is a very simple yet uh, complicated maybe setup, but I just wanted you to see how kind of simple it is for the most part it's not really much to it i think that what gets confusing is when we start to use these audio drivers and we have to route them within our system and that was the biggest thing that i was trying to avoid i just wanted to get my sound out of the daw and into a file that i can cleanly edit later which solved my problem with using the just headphone jack of the actual output of the actual interface and letting it feed into this uh, Atom Switcher. To be honest with you, the Atom Switcher is pretty much the workhorse, the brain of my entire operation. There are a bunch of variations of this as well for far cheaper of the price. I've seen Rode has a video caster now that's sick and it has some cool features. As of this video, I've seen Blackmagic also drop a new one to this and there are also smaller ones to it as well. They have some that don't record all the ISOs. There's do your research on it if you're looking into something like that. But I will tell you, this has sped up my workflow tremendously. This has really helped me accomplish just separation with my workflow and even with live streaming with this. When I live stream, all the OBS or Streamlabs or whatever you're using sees the Atom as is, is a webcam. So literally when I open up OBS right now, it's just gonna say black magic design and then my switching, all of that, all the audio, everything is right there. So it just makes it so much easier. I don't have to use these weird virtual drivers or anything, everything is pretty much there. So I hope that was helpful. I did more of a surface level with it for the most part, but that should help you as far as knowing just how I have a setup. Every creator is absolutely different. My studio is not just for music, it's for a ton of different things. And that's why you see a little bit of a mess here and there. I'm actually rewiring the entire thing and say, you know what, let me show them how I do it before I kind of start. But if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please just let me know in the comments below. And um, yeah, until next time, y'all.